The historic town of Corn in the Flinders Ranges has been the backdrop for some of our most iconic movies. Gallipoli, The Light Horseman, Sunday Too Far Away. Corn is also the setting for a remarkable story, the life of Faith Coulthard Thomas. So Faith, you were one of the stolen generation? Well, I always say that we were chosen generation. You feel like you were chosen? Yes. What sort of childhood was it? Well, out here, it was fantastic. That was the staff room. Yeah. Sister Hyde and Sister Rattus. We were only allowed in there to do our homework. Did you do much homework, Faith? No. You told me you did a bit of wagging from school, didn't you? Yes. How old were you when you came here? Three months. Three months? Mm-hmm. Taken away from your mum? Yep. My name is Tinyapa. Is it? Really? Yeah. But you got faith. But, see, that tree there had a swing in it, and that was the tree that I used to chuck rocks at. Two killer glass. Did you get any? Yeah. I'd get eight or nine. You had to throw it about that far in front, you know, and the glow ran into it. You were hitting them in motion, hey? Yes. That's not bad. Is that where you got your throwing arm from? Yes. Hitting glass? Yes. Faith spent her first 10 years at Colebrook Children's Home, an hour's walk from Corn. Faith is wearing blue, and in red is another Colebrook girl who would rise to national prominence. Lowitcher O'Donoghue. What's that? And that's when I learned how to write. What is that, Faith? Faith Coldhead. You wrote that there? Yeah. 80 years ago? 80 years ago. And it's still there. That is completely unreal. Faith went to high school in Adelaide and became one of the first Aboriginal nurses. When she discovered that women were playing cricket, she became an overnight sensation. I think I was only good at cricket because I was known as the fastest woman's delivery. And that was just chucking rocks at glass here in this creek bed. She blitzed the Adelaide competition. Six for nil. Mm. Six wickets. Yeah. And no one hit a run. No. <laughs> Faith was picked to open the bowling for Australia, becoming the first Aboriginal female to represent the nation at any sport. She mesmerised the batters. I put the middle stump, because I always aim for the middle stump, over the wicket keeper's head. She caught the bail. <laughs> <laughs> you skittled him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that was the English captain I bowled out. Was it? Yeah. Mary Duggan, her name was. What'd she say to you afterwards? She just sat on the pitch and laughed her head off. She said, I've never seen that happen before, <laughs> ever. You must have had them frightened. I did. They said, we stand up there with our eyes closed when you're bowling. You were that fast? Yeah. But you were coming off a run-up of only four steps. That's it. But your wrists had all the power. Yeah. From throwing those well, rocks. Chucking rocks at Galaz. In that creek there, there's tons of rocks. Faith's contribution to Australian life didn't end with her cricket exploits. She nursed all over the country and has been a great advocate for Indigenous Australians. Tyson Baird is writing a book on this 85-year-old legend. She's extremely remarkable. Arnie Faith was the first Aboriginal to play um, Test cricket for Australia, so in 1958, and that wasn't, uh, someone didn't do that again for about 39 years until Jason Gillespie came along in 1996. Um, so she was a trailblazer. The first Aboriginal woman Am to I? represent Australia in sport. Oh, I didn't know that. No one's told you that? No. Do you feel proud of that fact? Well, naturally, yeah, I should. Faith, have you noticed that since we've been out here, we haven't seen one galah? No. Are they frightened of you? I haven't seen one either. 
you know, that's unreal. Usually this creek is just chockers with glass.